Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the Reading Through the Bible in a Year series. Today we will be talking about Leviticus. I have to say right off the bat, Leviticus was not my favorite book to read. I definitely struggled reading through it and just getting it done, honestly. It just wasn't a very hope-filled type of book, but we will dive into that with the notes that I have written down. So Leviticus, just like Genesis and Exodus, was also written by Moses. And here are my main takeaways from the book. Chapters 1 through 5 were about laws of various things, burnt offerings, grain offerings, etc. Honestly, most of the book was about different laws, but we started off really strong with the first five chapters being about different laws. Moving forward to chapter 11, it's all about clean versus unclean animals. I remember even as a kid reading about the idea of clean versus unclean really stuck out in my memory. Chapter 12 is about childbirth and menstruation. Chapters 13 through 14 are laws about leprosy. Leprosy is a very common disease in the Bible, especially during the Old Testament times. Chapter 19 is God reminding us he is holy and that we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. It kind of ties back into Exodus when we got the Ten Commandments. Something that I thought was interesting was the phrase eye for an eye comes from Leviticus 24, 17 through 23. And then finally, the book ends with the feasts of the Lord, like the different celebrations to be had to show how much we love the Lord and then the blessings that you can receive for obedience. Which I think is a very interesting way to end the book considering it's all about laws and obeying God's laws. So yeah, those were all my takeaways from this book. Moving on to my didn't know slash didn't realize section, I have three takeaways for Leviticus. The first one comes from Leviticus 10 verses 1 through 3. I wrote, just did not know Aaron had sons that died and God used this as an example for what it means to be near God and to always glorify him. If I'm not mistaken, I believe during this part of the book a few of Aaron's sons were not being respectful towards God and God used their deaths as a means to show why it's important that we always glorify God. The second takeaway for this section was that Leviticus 13 verses 40 through 42 talks about being bald versus detecting leprosy because again leprosy is a very prominent disease that happens throughout the Bible. Yeah, I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. It's kind of like a silly takeaway to write into this section, but I wrote, made me chuckle, didn't know the Bible ever talked about baldness specifically. Like, I just, I didn't know that that was a term that was ever mentioned, discussed in the Bible, so I thought that was really interesting. And then my last one for didn't know, slash didn't realize, was in Leviticus chapter 19, God talks about how we are not to turn to mediums or necromancers, which are people who speak to the dead. So generally speaking, Christians are weary against anyone who can speak to the dead or speak to spirits, that kind of thing. But I've never like, I don't, I don't remember ever reading like a specific verse of the Bible where that came from. So I thought that was interesting too. But yeah, overall with these past two sections that I just talked about, I think I like what I touched on in the beginning that this book was just, it's very heavy on laws. I feel like maybe this is why it's a book that, I mean, I'm assuming depending on your denomination, I feel like growing up for me, I felt like Leviticus was not a book that we focused on, which again, I grew up Lutheran, so that makes a lot of sense because Lutherans really focus on emphasizing the goodness of God's grace and not the laws, especially the laws of the Old Testament because, I mean, that's a hard chapter to read through. Like, especially if you're someone who doesn't know the full story and you're reading it from beginning to end like I am, like, that's a really tough chapter. It's like, here's all these very specific laws that... God during the Old Testament wanted his people to follow and very specific instructions and then also very specific instructions to atone for your sins and it's kind of defeating it's like yeah some of them I would never even consider doing or think about doing but then some of them you're like oh my gosh these people had to do x y and z and this is God that we're talking about so understandably they wanted to make themselves right with the Lord and if that was the way to do it during those times then that was just how they were going to do it but it made me realize how grateful I am to live during a time in history that Jesus has already lived. Because for those who have known the Bible and who have read it, we know that the Old Testament's laws are not confined to them anymore because of God's grace and his love for us by sending his son to die for us so that all that is required of us now as humans is to simply have faith in Jesus and that's it. So as well as repent to him and apologize for what we've done. But I mean, wow, I just, it's, it's hard to fathom, especially I think now as an adult, like as a child, it was kind of like, oh, 
well, that's just what they did in the old times. Of course they had to do X, Y, Z to repent and be right with God again. But now as like an adult and trying to like envision me as an adult having to do X, Y, and Z, it's hard to imagine because I am just a human. I am just a sinful human. I am not perfect. So you are bound to fail and you are bound to sin and you're bound to make mistakes and... I don't know. It's it's a really tough chapter to read, but on the flip side, it makes me abundantly grateful <laughs> that I live in a time period that gets to celebrate the goodness that Jesus is. So yeah, even though this was not my favorite book, it definitely helped put perspective on how blessed I am to live during the time that I am. And then finally, uh, the last section for all these videos is my favorite verse from the book. I'm not gonna lie, it was a little bit hard to pick one, but I did really like the section that retouched back on the themes of the Ten Commandments, specifically Leviticus 19 verses 17 through 18. This was when God was reminding us to love our neighbors as ourselves. It says, You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Yeah, I feel like there's definitely still good reminders to get out of this book, even though we live under the new covenant and not under the old covenant anymore. And I think the emphasis on those two things, that God is Lord and that he through and through wants us to love other people as ourselves. I think those are two really good takeaways to get even from a book like Leviticus. But yeah, that is all I have for you guys today. I'm very excited to get into numbers. It is 36 chapters, so we shall see how it goes. But I will update you guys once I'm done. Alrighty, as always, I hope you guys are having a good day, but if you're not, that's okay too. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!